all right massey welcome back to the channel really Simmons? really this remember is what we do remember the shirt all right so um today we're gonna be talking about the fact that i almost went to jamaica with this guy and came back by myself <laughs> Now it's funny, but when it was happening, it wasn't funny. So without further ado, let's get into the video and just stick around for this insane story time video. So it all started. <laughs> Sunday it was night. like January what eighth or something when we came like the last day in Jamaica. The last day in Jamaica, but I can't remember. Let me tell you it was probably that. a Thursday. It was a Thursday. Because we came back and then we went to the thing on Saturday, right? Yes. Let me tell you. Stop! Come on, we're losing light. We're losing light. Come oh, on, we gotta tell the story. Left me alone, man. Come on, no man. Yeah, it was January 9th actually. January 9th. I I think it was a Thursday. It was. That's why I'm saying. Anyway, so we're in Montego Bay Airport yeah so i had a lot of trouble getting in right because i don't know if you guys if i ever even talked about it but i'm not a u.s citizen right so and i'm also not a jamaican citizen and people that come well everybody knew that <laughs> based on what um never mind right, right, right. <laughs> so um when i went down to montego bay and then i did some research afterwards apparently most people that have asked through there are americans or jamaicans or people from other Caricom countries. So, because I am there with my bright red EU passport, they were looking at me like, what the hell is this guy doing there? Yeah. So they took me to one person, next person, the kiosk wouldn't take me. Then on top of that, not only am I from the EU, but I have a green card. So where are they gonna, how are they gonna treat me? Do they need like a visa for me? What happened? Um, about two hours later, all good. You know, I got my, my paper visa that they printed for me. We were on our way. On our way back. It was yeah. a big line to start to get yeah, up it was there. A big mess, and right? they were putting people on a flight that was going to Florida yeah. before us, even though we were in the line before them. And they came there long after us and their flight was about to leave. So from the beginning, I'm just setting the mood that it was bad to begin with. I think it's a I don't want to oversimplify or be too general, but the Jamaican lack of understanding of what time is and that concept is definitely a part of that. Right. Well, um, let, let's let's stop there because, you know, people are going to get offended when you say that Jamaicans don't understand time. So let me clarify. Not, not all not. Jamaicans do <laughs> not understand time. In fact, the last time we did a video like this, a lot of Jamaicans said that they are always on time. I applaud so, these people. I am happy that you're always on time, but I'm Jamaican and I struggle with time management. So this is not about all Jamaicans. And it's about a select few. Uh, moving on, right? So it's time for us to leave. We check in. We go through the headache that they, whatever the TSA equivalent in Jamaica is. And it's time for us to go onto our flight. Mm. Yay! We're going. Yay. We're leaving Montego Bay. We're happy that we had such a good time because we're coming back to New York because we got to go to the in a couple of days, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I have been randomly pulled out of line quite a few times by this point. And then right before we get on the flight, they see like they're going down the list and then they see again, see me. Who the hell is this guy? He's not American. He's not Jamaican. Let's check him again. I'm like, oh my God, yo, you guys are going to dig through my bags again. I got to rearrange everything again. And it just so happens to be random because I keep, keep being randomly selected <laughs> every time I'm on any line in the airport on the way there and on the way back. I keep getting picked out of the line. So I'm, at this point, I'm just over it. I'm done. I want to go home. And the lady takes my bag. She starts looking through everything, and I'm like, "Dude, like you could pick through. No, any, like, you, like, you could pick through whatever you need, right?" No, but no, no, no. That's then, not what happens, right? So they pull out <laughs> Simas out of the line, right? So I was like, "Okay, Simas, he he makes it seem like he understands a lot of patwa, but he understands a lot of patwa that I speak, and now he's getting used to the way my mom speaks. So because of this, I said to the lady." He doesn't really understand the accent that well if it's not through me. So I might need to tell him what you are saying. You know what the lady said to me? Go on over the 
Vanessa, go stand up, Vanessa, right now. I didn't ask you anything. And then I'm just like, the nerve. <laughs> the nerve. <laughs> I was just trying to help. And then I went and I stood. So then I came back because I was still dissatisfied because I saw that Simus was very, not scared, but I could see that he was not comfortable with the situation. So I said, I was just explaining to you, you know, that he doesn't speak the language, doesn't understand the accent, so I need to help him. So then... She the, just said, oh, he'll be okay. He'll be fine. Yeah, said, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. <laughs> and then, I said, well, fine. That's that's fine. And then I said something. I can't remember what I said. I know but, what you said. No, no, no. That's not. But it must have triggered me to say something like that. So she said, no, no, no. The second time when I came to say to her, you know... I'll help him, blah, blah, blah. She said, you know what? Sit down over there. So me search your luggage too. I'll search your luggage too. So then I was like, um, fine. You can't even take off my clothes if you want. <laughs> because I know I don't have anything, right? So, and then the next lady knows. So them tag team me, tore them power one. Say, yes, she disrespectful. Why should I say something like that for the other lady over there? So me, I say, wait, no, this not happen, right? <laughs> so then... When you look, Simas get done. He's done being searched, right? And they sent you to stand in the corner. No, they sent me to go, go on, the, on the plane, but I'm not going by myself. Right. They said that you can go on the plane now. So then they were searching me at this point. So so Simas, <laughs> with his New York self, took out his phone and started recording them searching me. I don't know who told Simas to record. What happened? What happened? There's no sign that says I can't record. That's true. In, there Denmark, was... in Denmark, there's a sign. In New York, there's a sign. In Lithuania, there's a sign. In Latvia, there's a sign. In Sweden, there's a sign. Every airport I've ever been, there's a sign, but not Montego Bay. Right. So if Montego Bay is telling me I can't record, then I won't record. But Montego Bay is not telling me that. So. So they sat me down. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm telling what she said. I'm telling what she said. <laughs> she said, sit down right as a right now. I'm going to call the cops on you. I'm going to call the cops and delete everything off your phone right in front of me. So Simas took out his phone, deleted it. You deleted yeah, it, right? right in front of he deleted it, and then he's like, "So can I go now?" <laughs> yeah. So what do you want from me, right? And then, and then she's like, "No, stay right there." And then she told the other lady that was tag teaming me with her to go call the cops. So the other lady did some gesture, like she did call the cops on her phone. And then she was like, "No, you can't leave." To Simas, sit down right there. We we'll call the cops, and they come in. They come in right now. So. I'm thinking to myself, when did this escalate to get so bad? <laughs> so, because I'm still like not understanding, because I'm still there being searched, right? So then I said to Simmons, when, and then she was done searching me by this point. So then I went to go stand in the same corner that they put Simmons in. So it's like we're alternating in this corner. So, so when I was over there, I said to Simmons, you know what? So they put me even further behind where I can't really communicate with him mm -hmm. and I can't really like see him that much. So I said, I shouted, if you don't feel comfortable, ask to speak to the supervisor. And then the lady, she was like, you can speak to the supervisor. Who cares? Look here. So I said, yes, call the supervisor, please. Supervisor came. What happened? Well, I told her before the supervisor even came, I'm, I looked at her. I'm like, yo, are you going to call the cops or not? Because I have a right <laughs> Like, bring the cops over here because I got to go. Like, this, it's not like I can wait for the next train after this one passes. Like, this is my flight. I got to get home. So I looked at her. I'm like, what are you waiting for? I'm trying to get home. So either let me go or like, call the cops or what, right? So, because we here, you don't play games like that. Like, make it happen or let, let somebody go. Right. Nobody has time for this. Because JetBlue is not going to wait for us, you know? Right. So then, eventually, a JetBlue manager comes. And, mm -hmm. and Who was the supervisor? Of... The police, I guess. I don't know. Montego Bay police. No, she, no, it was a confusing situation because security is security and JetBlue staff is JetBlue staff here. There, security and JetBlue staff worked together. So we didn't really understood I that dynamic in the first place. But she came and she, she, you told her the situation. And, I told her. I said she's to the like, lady. like, okay, what do you go? Please, like, get out of here. I said to the lady, you know, I was just explaining to her that Simis doesn't really understand the power that much if it's not coming from me or, or my relatives. And then she, she was like, and then I said, she blew up because of that. And then the next lady said, the next lady that was tag teaming me initially, she's like, but you were being disrespectful. You told her you, I'm going to say yes. I, I told her I'd take my clothes off so she could search me because I one thing about me, if I say something, I'm going to own it. 
I do not like I don't like telling lies and I don't like beating around bushes. So if I say something, best believe some are gonna own it. So then I'm like, yeah, I did say that. And then the lady said, Oh, I understand, you know. I understand. That's the, the manager lady, the supervisor lady. She said, Yeah, I understand. You guys could go, you guys could go. And I'm just like, why? Why did we just go through that? She must almost get locked up right because if the police come we don't know what the police would undo would the police let we go would the police lock, let, lock up simmons you know we don't know so it's like the whole situation was all for nothing because there was no reason for her to act like that because i was trying to explain to simmons what she was saying you know mm. because i feel like people don't realize that patwa is spoken differently based on your parish Right? And at the end of the day, it's still the same patwa. But if you're not from an English speaking country in the first place, and if you're not like familiar with patwa, you probably just won't understand it. You have to get used to it, right? And I think it was a completely valid point that Simas had. I don't even hold any anger because I left it in Jamaica, right? So it's, it's just a really bad taste in my mouth that I had like such a good experience for the most part over there. And then like on my way out, it's like that that had to happen you know just let me go home like i had a lot of good times i ate a lot of good food i made you know met family of yours that i haven't met before like it was all good until but that the end en the entrance was horrible but the exit was Worse. beyond that right at that airport i if i go to jamaica again i'm gonna not go there again because i i don't know i've never been to kingston the airport the city or anything but if i go there i would like to have a different experience and i have heard plenty of well read plenty of bad reviews about Montego Bay in particular that they're just very unprofessional and then unfortunately that's I saw it for myself and I, I I emailed them I contacted everybody there so I hope that person is no longer working there because she clearly can't handle the job and it was all for nothing I think and I don't know comment down below if you had a similar experience at that airport or you know somebody that had that experience at Montego Bay airport Anyways, that's it for this story time vlog and um, I hope you guys enjoyed it because now looking back at it, we're definitely laughing about it. But during the time yeah. when when Simmas, when I saw Simmas so angry, my body just start get hot. Like from it go down to two, we just start feel hot. And I felt so angry. But yeah, that's yeah. over now. But like 10 minutes into sitting on the plane, I was calm and you were yeah. just like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but we, you know. Because we can't bother. We can't bother. Anyways, I think this video is probably going to be too dark, but we. We'll be on it. Yeah. Anyways, guys, we'll see you in another vlog. Yep. Yeah.